Hey there, this is going to be a draw with me sketching session. In this one, we're going to be doing some character design style sketching, probably of some fantasy esque characters. But before we do that, let's check out some of the cool art that I saw this morning hanging around the internet. All right, welcome to the Drawing Codex. My name's Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years. And on this channel, we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. All right, this one is for Monday, the 5th of September, 2022. And we're just checking out the front page of ArtStation to see what we can find. The first thing that I saw that kind of got me thinking was this one by T. Me. And again, I feel like sometimes when we're kind of like really just sort of focusing on, you know, sort of structural drawing, um, it can be really easy to just overlook how cool, you know, sort of just playing with color and impact can be. I think this is a really, really great example of both of those things happening. Um, but yeah, it just has that really dreamy quality where we're focusing on great shape design, great composition, um, nice sort of, again, sort of vibrant color scheme. Yeah, really, really cool work. And again, just like super, super fun image, a little bit creepy, a little bit weird, a little bit dreamy, but uh, again, really, really good. The next thing I saw were these cool images by Hudao and again this is so tricky on ArtStation because uh, yeah you know you can easily kind of miss something. I saw the thumbnail for this and I thought oh that kind of looks cool but then if you actually go through and check out all of this stuff here it's like uh, yeah insanely cool and interesting. Um, yeah really really fun sort of little um, animated pages and illustrations and yeah just awesome line and color work. Really really fun stuff again this one's so cool again i just love those images of yeah mechs sort of being fixed and stuff like that always reminds me of uh you know those sort of classic uh, masamun shuro ghost in the shell shots where you just see some mech with its you know sort of guts hanging out and it's being fixed and just i remember thinking when i first saw those like i just have no conception how any artist could create that sort of level of complexity and have any sort of idea because it all looked sort of functional um and yeah this is a really good example of that as well yeah super super cool idea uh really sort of fun and yeah cool to see as well the the sort of animation and stuff like that and that again is something i wish i could sort of figure out how to do um but yeah i don't got any time at the moment um but yeah that's so cool awesome the next things that I saw were these awesome sort of takes on the Dune um, characters by uh, Max uh, Schultz. And yeah, I thought these were really, really good. Just uh, awesome, awesome level of polish and variation. Um, I don't know whether they're, you know, sort of for anything sort of official or whether it's just, again, someone taking a stab at that sort of Dune um, design because it's always something that I, I think sort of inspires um, good art. There's just something about that book, but yeah, really, really cool sketches here. Just next level, um, sort of finish and polish on these. Yeah. Very, very, very cool. And, uh, again, you know, um, just makes me realize how much I need to sort of get better at rendering and stuff like that when I'm doing this kind of work, because normally my stuff is way, way sketchier. The next thing I saw were these, which again, similar kind of vein, but uh, much sort of sketchier style, but um, yeah, still able to kind of create very, very interesting designs. These are by uh, uh, Hiyu. Again, assuming that's somewhat close to the proper pronunciation. Again, let me know if anyone, if anyone knows, but um, yeah, some really, really cool, interesting um, character designs here. Again, you know, super interesting to see the, the different sort of approaches that people take to this. Um, this is very much, you know, focusing on sort of good, you know, like strong, big shapes as opposed to small details. But 
the thing I really liked about these was just um, the, the kind of good sense of overlap, right? It's a real strong sense that, you know, the bits of clothing and little sort of elements are overlapping each other nicely, which, uh, again, is always something that sort of really, really helps to give that level of complexity. But yeah, really, really fun uh, little designs where, again, you know, making sure all these characters feel like they're from a similar world but obviously uh, drastically different at the same time. The next thing I saw was this, which uh, again, I can't read nor pronounce the, the name there, but uh, links for all of these will be in the description. And yeah, just really cool sort of, uh, you know, like exaggerated um, sort of character design, super, super polished, super structural. I think, yeah, it just looked really, really cool. And um, again, just next level sort of presentation and, and cleanness on it all. But yeah, this one was really cool. Just, uh, you know, you sort of, um, you notice it from, um, you know, across the room, right? Really sort of stands out on the front page. Um, great mix of cool shapes and that sort of, you know, aggressive sort of uh, fun Capcom design style look that I'm always sort of into. Again, if you've, you know, checked out the channel, you know I'm all about sort of Capcom art books and, you know, how good that sort of, uh, you know, design is. And this has that kind of exaggerated feel, but again still very much in control of all of the structure and stuff and the last thing i saw here was this which uh again just had a really cool sort of um um again that kind of uh manga tonality to it really really good sense of sort of drawing structure cool sort of weird creepy idea i don't know it just kind of like really seems to be to me working nice on like many many levels um, yeah, nice sense of shading, but uh, again, you know, not letting the shading overpower the, the drawing too much. But yeah, this one was really, really cool. Again, not quite sure what's going on, but it was really, really fun to just kind of look at this. And again, subtle um, adjustments to the posture that really kind of make it and um, sell the character. This one is by uh, Myung uh, Hwan Kim. And uh, yeah, awesome stuff. But uh, anyway, let's jump over to the drawing table and do some sketching. All right, here we are at the drawing table. So the tools for today are some Blackwing matte pencils. I'm going to have a kneadable eraser that's probably pretty close to needing replacement. And I'm just drawing on, again, same as the last few of these some Strathmore 400 series drawing paper with a smooth surface. Again, it is like a real sort of paper, um, about 130 um, GSM, etc. It's the same sort of paper that, again, we drew the last few um, sort of sketch sessions on. So yeah, just doing that. And I think the sort of goal for today is to just sort of think about maybe some, you know, sort of character design style images maybe just do a few character sketches basically but we'll do them sort of full figure and see how we go so again i'm going to do a few sort of simple verticals here to just kind of keep us honest and again think about kind of where where these characters might be sort of sitting and yeah, just start sort of roughing things in. So, you know, this is normally, you know, the kind of process I, I use for, you know, doing character sketches and, and stuff like that. Um, you know, once I've kind of figured out a character design and it, it's, it's a matter of, you know, sort of showing it and exploring it, that's kind of the, the next phase. If I'm doing design, you know, often I'm really just sort of thinking about costume, posture, sort of attitude and, and and often I find it's just a matter of kind of finding that one or two kind of images that really kind of sells the idea right that really kind of like nails that character and, and after that it's sort of easy to to find it again uh, so yeah some good examples here right of these kind of characters from this book so you know uh, it really doesn't matter what form the character design takes for me the the goal is to then you know, capture that, that simple idea and then be able to, you know, transfer it to, to other mediums, right? So, you know, some of these were done a little bit more painterly. Some of the key things were done with a pencil. And, you know, then it's always a matter of sort of taking that and, you know, turning it into the, 
you know, like the, the finished image, whatever we're sort of creating the, the finished pages, etc. with. So yeah, in this case, we're going to be sketching with pencil, but normally, as I always say, when I'm doing my comics, etc., I'm creating these digitally with the line and color style. If you want to learn a little bit more about how I do this, you can check out my free quick start guide. It's aimed to get you up and running with a simple, reliable line and color style in Photoshop. You get all of the brushes and techniques and my general advice for going from thumbnail to finished image in there. So link for that will be in the description. It's free. Go check it out if that's something you're interested in. But for now, again, let's just try do some simple kind of character design things. Again, these are just sort of warm up sketches, you know, I'm sort of doing for, for myself. Um, yeah, so I'm not, not really thinking too much about about that, but um, might be cool. Again, let's maybe play with some sort of small characters and big characters. So we're thinking about maybe some, again, different types of posture. And yeah, you know, when, it, when I'm normally, you know, sort of working and doing my stuff, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty loose. I'm trying to stay somewhat, somewhat structural, right? But again, the, the initial sort of rough in is, is pretty loose. And, you know, I, I'll often just sort of rough in the character. So I, I, I'm often like having an idea for you know what what that character should should look like and and what that character should be and uh, this is often just that the posing right it's the gesture it's the it's the skeleton All right so again we sort of got some baseline bump again feet pretty close together there this character might have wider set feet and uh, yeah you know if you're following along with the channel you'll be able to notice a lot of the tricks and, and things that I'm using here to really kind of help block these in quickly it's all the same stuff that I do day in day out Bom. So, you know, often when we're, we're doing character designs, uh, yeah, you know, it, it's not about doing cool, interesting poses quite so much, you know, it's just about keeping it, keeping it simple. So I'm going to do a quick, quick rough in, and, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of elevate myself. So stand up a little bit and that's going to allow me to just sort of double, triple check a lot of the perspective here. Just make sure that right, a lot of these things are actually going in the proper direction. So we'll put in these lines again, double, triple check, put these in. Oh. All right, and let's do a few other things that can, can really help at that stage. Uh, finding center. And, you know, I, I find even though, you know, you could just sort of start drawing the costume at this stage, you know, as opposed to kind of putting in the anatomy first and, and then thinking about the costume. The reality is once you spend, you know, a bit of time, oh, you see, I think that elbow has gotten a little bit, a little bit low. Yeah, once you spend some time doing it, the anatomy doesn't actually take that much time to kind of rough in. And yeah, one of the things I notice is, again, if I kind of really just focus on like drawing, right, like let's get, you know, the structure happening, all right, on this one then when I'm sort of thinking a little bit more about design, like costumes, etc., 
I, I'm I'm not worrying too much about the drawing because that that kind of side of it has kind of been taken care of with with this kind of initial sort of structural path. So it allows me to to take my eye a little bit off that sort of drawing, right? Because again, especially when we're often again not not always you know focusing a hundred percent on again viewing it from the right angle, especially in this case where I've got a you know, sort of view it from a weird angle because of the recording. But in general, right, you know, if you just kind of double check, you know, just be like, okay, is, is the is the proportion right? Is the structure right? You know, what's going on? Then, yeah, it's a lot easier to then just focus on, okay, here's the design. Bump. Not quite sure what's going on here. Yeah, and that as well could be a little bit better. Sort of framed. Yeah, so there we go. Again, same thing here. All right, we got all right, character here a little bit. Right, I want this character to actually be sort of wearing a hood. So yeah, sort of thinking about what would happen with this. So we've done the we've done the initial sort of block in. And yeah, let's see how much yeah, not not sure about the costume on this, like how much that is sort of actually actually going to work with what I want. So again, good idea in, in this case to focus on putting that anatomy in, as I was saying, right? Kind of tried to skip it a little bit and yeah, sort of paying the price because now now that I'm sort of in costume design land, it, it's hard to know sort of why, right? Like, why are we making, why are we making choices? Is it because of costume or anatomy? And then we sort of got to refine the anatomy. So we can also think about, you know, sort of general shape design at this point. We have again some sort of bird, something here. So you can see again that first pass is a little bit sort of rougher. Um, but again, you know, hopefully there's like a little bit of a, a sense of um, structure plus sort of gesture there. We've got some 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 rough ideas. And probably again, you know, what I would do next is think a little bit more about about the structure. Well, and uh, yeah, you know, just finding different shapes and ideas in here. Not sure how much, uh, you know, how much finish I need, how much polish I need. Uh, 
Um, but yeah, often I'll be trying to find some sense of like like focus with the character, right? So by that I mean some sense of like you know is this going to be interesting? Is is this gonna is this gonna work? And that really is just a matter of what like what what are you or what what is what do I in this case think of when I'm sort of imagining this character right like is there something interesting so you know that's why we can you know move around a little bit more right let's think about where this neck is going to be going and yeah if, if you know that the process that I'm typically going to use it's kind of very easily um, be possible to kind of knock all of these things down and you know add some detail if right if that seems like that's what I want to do don't know what this bird is about but again these are just sort of designs and design right design ideas and that hand is not looking very sort of elegant but that's all right so again from a from a costume sort of standpoint I want this to be one of those situations where there's like an like a big arm that you can sort of get in and out of. Just like that. That's like a sort of a fun idea. Right, so something you can sort of put your put your hand into. But then you can also sort of get it out through the side. This arm, um, right over here, though. All right, let's see if we can put some sense of connection there. With that arm. Um, so again, just doing one pass, right? That's it's for me. It's like really important to just be like one one pass. Don't get caught on details. Don't get right. Don't get too too caught up on anything. Because if it's the thing is again, you can you can easily with with sort of designy stuff or whatever, you can easily get really hooked on like anything, you know, um, and and just spend a huge amount of time. But you know, it's easy to kind of spend a lot of time drawing a nice nose, and then you know, unfortunately, the whole design is just not very good. So that was a waste of time. So again, got torso here that I'm kind of finding within the within the within the sketch oh again here I've got right that sort of torso if we sort of draw through so again we're going to end up with like a pretty sort of sketchy mess or at least that's what I'm sort of imagining here but for me that is totally kind of fine Here, the idea is just kind of grabbing some sort of staff or something. And normally, you know, if, if that hasn't been designed, you know, I'm just putting in something that's kind of like a placeholder. And, uh, you know, later on we'll, we'll do some passes on just that. Again, maybe some feathers or something like that. Um, and again, the face, I feel like we'll really need some 
adjustment. But a lot of the trick with character design stuff for me is that if I sort of do it quick enough, then it doesn't really matter because we can just sort of do it again, right? So it's, um, yeah, it's only it's only a problem if, if we sort of spend too long on it. And, you know, if, if I get sort of an idea, right, like this would be the first pass, if then we get another idea, right, we build on it. And you're like, oh, well, I kind of like this bit. I kind of liked that bit. But, uh, you know, let's keep going, right? Let's see what's there. You could easily, you know, what I would often do is, uh, uh, you know, if I'm doing this type of design stuff uh, is you know, frequently do multiple passes, right? You know, you sort of get one thing right, I might take it in, do some color. Uh, again, as I keep saying, if, if you do it quick enough, uh, anything's possible. And I think this is where, uh, you know, just being able to sort of sketch and, and draw quickly is so useful because you can just iterate so quickly if we just focus on having you know like good effective quick quick drawings So some sort of uh, like sort of witchy character, but not not like an old witchy character. So again, just checking what that kind of looks like from the zoomed out sort of version. Might try and add some, can add some like coins or something like that, sort of tied to the bottom here. Just thinking about random stuff to try. All right, gonna have ear here. Play around with that hair coming out here. So yeah, huge, um, now huge mess, right? Like lots of sort of sketchiness. Again, not sure. Face seems a little bit big. We could probably make that a little bit smaller. Now that the thing with you know, it, it being like a, a big mess is that again, often if I'm doing this, I'm not doing this pass, this um, this dark, you know, I'd be doing this pass a little bit lighter. Um, but for these sort of demonstrations, all right, so let's again, see if we can find that kind of center. We've got a center there. So let's at least try and put these different um yeah what was i saying anyway yeah i'd, I'd normally have uh, normally have this a lot lighter right so it's it's not going to require so much kind of um erasing and, and sort of heavy erasure work right because, um, you, you know, if, if you're dealing with e even just, you know, like a, a lighter black wing, right? If you just take, you know, like a lighter black wing, then you'd be able to do all this and, and then you could go over with a, with a much darker one, right? Really, really start to, to hit it hard and, uh, you know, get some interesting stuff happening, happening that way. Okay, it might be good to, not sure how far to play the, the sort of the feathers as a, as a motif but it could be cool 
All right. So, you know, again, I'm like, oh, uh, it, it's good to have a, a range of characters here. I find because, you know, that way you can bounce around a little bit. All right. If we got a few, then, you know, this one isn't the most important. And, you know, normally if I'm doing this, if, if, if I'm sort of doing this, uh, you know, again, for a job or something like that, I'm, I'm normally trying to get sort of three of these done to a pretty high, not not to a high degree of, of polish, but but again, like some some sense of resolution uh, that, uh, again, is, is going to be sort of obviously bigger than, like more finished than than these are going to be. But, you know, if you just kind of start, you know, sketching around, get a few of these kind of out in the beginning, can really be useful. Often with concept design, again, one of the things I, I'm constantly trying to sort of harp on about is, you know, if you look at a lot of concept design uh, tutorials, people are frequently going on about starting with a little thumbnail, right? And, um, you know, then you kind of, do a lot of sort of random ideation at, at the thumbnail phase and, and then you kind of take it further. I think you learn things at this sort of sketch phase. You learn things doing, you know, very, very detailed versions of this. You learn things at every sort of phase of the process and they all sort of help inform that sort of finished design. So, you know, I, I really favor an idea of, uh, again, you know, uh, s similar to, to, to a Bruce Lee, Jeet Kune Do style ideology, right? There's there's no form, there's no right way of doing it, right? You, you just kind of have to respond to what's actually happening right now and, uh, you know, not get too caught up in any sort of specific design process or step by step or like, here's how you bake a cake. Um, I don't think that works for this type of process. You need to be more flexible. So sometimes doing some of these might work. If I find I'm, you know, sort of too blocked in, in terms of my ideas, though, uh, you know, at this phase, then, yeah, it might be better to, you know, try some thumbnails, right? If uh, thumbnails are really good at, at pushing your shape design, you know, making sure we, we break outside of the norms when it comes to what, uh, you know, what sort of shapes we, we put in there, you know, like how, how far to push that stuff. And, uh, you know, if, if you're finding like, oh man, you know, I'm doing these kind of more finished drawings and, you know, it's just not happening. You know, I'm just not pushing it far enough. That's where, you know, shape design can, can be, you know, really, really useful to, to you know, do a, a specific part of your process that just focuses on shape design. And, you know, I, I think that's where we need to sort of contextualize a lot of those exercises, right? As opposed to saying, well, you always start with thumbnails. It's like, well, not always. Um, depends what you're doing. And, uh, you know, I mean, going to the, to the whole concept of, uh, you know, AI taking our, you know, trying to eat all our lunch and stuff like that, the more formulaic you are with your process, the more likely a robot is going to be able to take your job, basically. I mean, it, that, to me, that's always seemed very sort of basic, right, as a, as a calculation. So... The less formulaic, the more kind of thought you can put into it, the more you can kind of come at it from different angles. Um, understand, again, your job is to kind of, you know, hit the brief. Um, you know, maybe your art director or something like that will suggest or want or, um, you know, require, request thumbnails. You know, let's just start with some thumbnails. In that case, it's like, okay, sure. You know, like, you know, if someone's thinks that that's kind of where they're thinking, you know, and they just want to explore big ideas. Uh, you know, I, I, I think that's uh, that's totally separate. Um, but in general, you know, uh, and again, you can request, you can request to do it however you want. And that's also just your deliverable, you know, like there's what do you deliver? What do you hand to the people you're working with on day one? 
day two, day three, etc. And then there's your development process, which could be, hey, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm going to hand out a bunch of thumbnails, but you know, I'm going to spend a few hours doing this first um, and get a feel for like, you know, what, how, you know, how how do we sort of organize this? Again, I, I think there's a lot more flexibility if you're taking on the burden and burden of, of trying to actually design stuff. Um, and uh, you know, taking responsibility for you know the design. I, I think if you if you do that, um, it's mostly a matter of then it's mostly a matter of communicating how your design process works and you know what you sort of need. At least that's that's kind of my approach, right? Um, but yeah, any, anyone out there who, you know, is, uh, you know, maybe, again, you know, doing lots of professional work and has different opinion, let me know in the comments if you've got any sort of other ideas for how, you know, stuff that's really worked for you. Um, and, th and the reason I, I go on about this is, is, again, like a lot of the stuff that I'm thinking of is, is based on the, the things that students have come to me, again, when I was sort of, you know, teaching heavily, you know, like many days a week, um, you know, dealing with the same students, taking them through the, the drawing curriculum and stuff, and just sort of listening to the things that everyone's talking about, you know, and, and I know that if, if you go look up, you know, how to be a character concept artist or, you know, how to do concept design, you know, you go look that up on the internet in, very, in a very sort of reasonable way, you know, often you do find lots of tutorials of people just doing, again, like, you know, pages of, of, of black and white thumbnails and you, you see a particular stuff. So, so I, I, again, there's a reason that that does work, but, but I think often we get photocopying of information, as it were, so that the, per the person who's kind of teaching that doesn't really understand how that fits into, you know, sort of day-to-day -day life if you're character designing, you know, all day, every day for, for years and years and years, etc. Again, just trying to create some sort of interesting shapes here. This guy's looking a bit boring, probably. Again, it's like, don't focus, I, probably a, a bit of a mistake to focus too much sort of up there. This guy's looking pretty generic to my eyes, at least. Um, so again, could be could be a question of like, well, what do what do we do to what do we do to fix that? Um, and and again, there's there's often different ways, you know. I'll sort of approach that, right? You know, if I've got a sketch and I'm just like, eh, oh yeah, it's kind of like, I mean, it's okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, one is to kind of just say, well, let's just, you know, finish it off quickly. We'll, you know, we'll sort of bag it and, you know, maybe just sort of show people and say like, yeah, well, you know, this is probably a little bit too generic, right? It's not very interesting. Uh, but, you know, that might actually be what's required. Um, yeah. Or what you can do is just sort of start erasing and see if you can come up with some crazy idea. <laughs> on top of it, right? Just kind of be like, well, this is not going to turn out very well anyway, so let's see what we can do, right? Let's see what we can add, right? Can we can we make this? Can we make this uh, interesting in some way, shape, or form? Again, don't know whether a big sword is going to do it, right? That's not really on the uh, on the agenda for super original ideas. But again, often it's a uh, yeah. You know, I, I kind of just feel like sometimes that you know, just a little bit restrained from a shape point of view. All right. So 
So again, as I say, you know, these are often just sort of warm ups, right? Um, and you, you know, what, one of the most important things to you know that that I sort of learnt really works in terms of you know just messing around and getting trying to you know figure out good things that work from a, a as a concept artist. You know, when I've been doing that day in day out on particular jobs is. You know, if if I spend some time and, and I feel like the results are a little bit generic or, you know, I'm not sort of pushing it that far, again, you know, that can be worthwhile. It, it's not a matter of sort of freaking out, right? When I was beginning, I, I, I would sort of freak out a lot more, you know, in the early sort of days. If I did one sketch and it wasn't right, I'd, I'd sort of start to um, spiral. Whereas, uh, you know, now I, I found, you know, it, it's often much better to view this as a case of, well, that didn't work, right? I need to push it more than that. Or, you know, like, what can I do extra on, on top of this? And, and thinking about it in terms of this being one part of the process. And I found that is a lot more effective, right? So if we just kind of get that done, right? And then go like, okay, what's next, right? We sort of been, you know, sketching for 40 minutes. Let's, uh, you know, let's try again. Let's see what else we can do. And it's that process of, um, iteration and uh you know exploration that that i think uh you have to embrace if you're designing a lot of characters right again you know have some idea and it's like oh that's too far out there oh i have some idea and that's like oh that's too generic right where do we sit well again that is the question so um and, and, and also you can see like you know as i'm sort of progressing right you know, starting to loosen up a bit, starting to be able to get the the, the mix of like, you know, oh, okay, I'm, I'm drawing at a piece where my ideas start to flow a little bit better. And uh, that's often what I'm sort of looking for when I'm in the, the that concept art sort of flow, right? Where I'm just like, yeah, let's let's draw some more, right? Let's, let's really start cranking, you know? Um, and uh, yeah, you know, so we're probably at, uh, what's that about? sort of 40 minutes we've sort of got two kind of you know sort of roughed in and uh yeah you know i just keep doing this you know just keep that should be a little bit up and uh yeah once you get the pace right you know where, where you, you again you know like it's, it's very easy here early on I'm, I'm sort of thinking a little bit more about like oh but the toe's not right no, but this is not right, you know, and, and, and then you kind of realize like, you know what, this, this whole character might not even, you know, might not even do anything for the process. So, you know, let's just get it, let's just um, match the speed and the, the effort and, and the, the, the focus that we're drawing with. Let's make sure that all those things sync up, right? So the amount of time we're spending on the drawing, the value of the ideas, the point that we're at in the ideation phase right let's make sure all of those things are actually kind of aligned and uh again i think you know once you're kind of at that stage that's when uh yeah i, I think we'll, we'll start to get um for me that's when you know i'm going to start to see more effective drawings right um but yeah certainly you know if I, if I spend a lot of time doing illustration or you know comics where you know, I, I'm all focused on the, the, the efficiency of particular strokes, right? Trying to get like a, a particular level of finish happening in a particular time. You know, I'm often going to be a lot more restrained. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to sort of plan it out a little bit more. I'm not going to be as sort of loose with the strokes because what I want is to kind of prepare for that final, the final stroke. Whereas again, when I'm sort of doing this, yeah, it's a little bit more about experimentation, as it were. Boom, boom. But yeah, you know, that's uh, that's kind of some good warm-up sketches done here. Um, let's just quickly check some things like foot position. Make sure again, I'm not going to come back at these and 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 feel embarrassed because I've got the feet wrong, despite making YouTube videos about how you know easy and simple it is to get the feet right <laughs> again these are these are concept designs and, and and a lot of this is just you know I, I the, the reason i often talk about these things is i have to remind myself that it's all about expectation 
you know, part of me is doing a drawing demo and I'm like, oh, the drawing's got to be good. But then it's a matter of resetting that expectation and saying, but you know what, this is a concept art drawing demo, right? So, you know, we can be looser, right? We can be, we can be rougher. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it is very hard to move between those things effectively. Bump. So thinking about, again, that sort of layering, some good examples. Uh, again, that we we're looking at just earlier that had really good sort of layering. So I'm kind of like thinking of that. Oh. And again, probably a lot of details here and things that, um, yeah, not, I'm kind of thinking about them. Uh, do doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to do a great job of, you know, sort of illustrating them here. Uh, in this particular drawing, that's where again we got to sort of start again and keep going and keep iterating. But uh, again, let's have a have a little crack at the few those last little bits of detail. Again, you know, if you do find a drawing is you know being really, you know, it's kind of working, then it's uh, certainly possible to keep working on it and see if we can you know turn it into a turn it into a final oh. not not enough resolution in terms of pencil there to to really kind of push the top lip might be better again to just kind of like leave it um mostly again when when i'm doing concept design stuff i'm just looking for you know at, at what point do do i start to feel the character and 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 does it work for me uh you know even if it's just like a weird little mark for a mouth or something like that I can go back and figure out why that worked later. Um, but uh, yeah, if you sort of capture it, then we uh, shouldn't look a gift horse in the mouth, so to speak. Yeah, here we go. Boom. So again. Her eye is kind of see-through through that hood, which doesn't make much sense, but uh, we'll let it we'll let it stand. Some sort of stitching here. Oh. And yeah, there we there we go. So again, a lot a lot of stuff kind of like not not really resolved but that's sort of cool i do think i feel like we could uh, again sort of put this finger there maybe make this hand a little bit more sort of suggestive or just not worry about it too much again it's often just that sort of silhouette that's going to that's going to matter. Um, so again, it feels like maybe this bird is kind of, maybe the bird is on the other side. I think that makes a lot more sense from a, from a drawing perspective. So again, just because of the way it was sort of put and it wasn't really sitting right. But again, because it's a concept design, don't have to redraw the whole thing. All right, put that there. Anyway, that is probably enough for now. Otherwise, I'll sort of keep keep fiddling around, keep keep playing with it. 
we could kind of again just push and define the silhouettes there. But yeah, probably needs another pass on this, right? Not a little bit drawings, a little bit sort of rough, but that's uh, that's how I would sort of do these. And what's the time? Yeah, we're about sort of 45 minutes, maybe 40 minutes into this. So, you know, that's how I would kind of handle it. Um, just kind of keep rolling, right? Keep doing some, some sort of sketching uh, until the idea starts to flow, right? Until Until we sort of start to... Yeah, you know, really solidify both. Uh, again, mix that idea of like, what have I got in my head? What am I thinking of? How's that translating to the page? Can I sort of make that work? And then we modify what's on the page. Then we iterate what's going on in our mind. And again, start to sync up the idea with, with, the, with the image. Again, that's why drawing is uh, again, still pretty useful as an ideation tool. Uh, despite 3D and all that kind of stuff, you know, being really, really good for presentation. Anyway, I digress. I think that's all we've got for this one. So I uh, hope your drawing is going well. Uh, let me know if you've got any questions or comments down below. But uh, other than that, we'll catch you in the next video. Happy drawing.